time now, though, to celebrate female leadership and, in particular, its importance in the financial sector. Later this evening, Cybos hosts a major networking event that will discuss how we can work together to deliver positive change in the industry. Well, joining us now to explore this in more detail are Jackie Fox, Europe leader Accenture Security at Accenture, uh, Gronia Edmonds, UK head of sales and relationship management for financial intermediaries, security services at BNP uh, Paribas. We're going to meet Jennifer Peavy. Now, Jennifer is the Managing Director, Head of Strategy and Business Development at DTCC. And Priya Bajoria, who's the Senior Vice President, Head of Financial Services, North America, at Publicis Sapiens. Let's take a breather, guys. <laughs> Let's just take a breather. Let's take it all in. We've got a nice full studio. Thank you so much for your time joining us on Cybers TV. And congratulations. And of course, congratulations. I'm going to start uh, with you, Jackie. Uh, Accenture's recent research stated women make up to 17% of security professionals. Drawing from your own experience, what will it take to bring more women into security roles? Well, I think there's a long game and a short game here. In the long term, we need to make sure that, you know, our schooling and our education system is laying out technology and security, my area specifically, as a career that people might aspire to. But I think in the short term, we need to make sure that people who maybe haven't had a technology training background, maybe they're from a legal background, any background at all, if they're smart, we'd love them in cybersecurity. <laughs> so we need to... to, to show them how they can shift, you know, from one to the other, from what they're doing at the moment, because there's openings for everybody. Great opportunities in cyber. Are everyone. you dropping hints at me, in my direction? <laughs> 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 Anything's possible in this world. Gronje, you've been on a really interesting journey because you were a mentor last year on the Cybos Talent Accelerator route, now the STAR programme. So yeah. what is the importance of mentorship in actually developing women in the financial industry or indeed any other? Because the, the complaint we often hear is that there aren't enough mentors around. Yeah, so the STAR programme is well worth participating in. So for anyone looking in to think, will I do it as a mentee or a mentor? Absolutely valuable, a great way to connect. And so and at BNP Paribas, we, we field candidates every year for that and we'll continue to do so. I think mentorship is very important and I'm sure everyone here on the panel will agree with that. And, you know, I, I think back something that I took five or six years to figure out, if you can pass that on, that learning to the next generation coming through and they learn it in a few months, then seeing that acceleration and that we're not just repeating the cycle, each generation of women coming through, but, you know, that that progress is happening is great. So I would say, you know, mentorship can take different forms, can be for different reasons, can be personal. You know, I'm a mother, I've got a child with special needs. And so, you know, some, some women come up against that and, you know, passing that on, or it might be the career side of things as well. So, you know, it's not the only strategy we have, but it's a really good one for companies to adopt. Jennifer, what do you think makes an effective leader? I'm a big believer in inclusive leadership. I think it, it really accelerates the growth, the, um, the ability to innovate and in someone's performance when you bring them along for the journey. You let them explore their capabilities and or their abilities and their key skill sets. And um, it also just drives diversity of discussion. So you get a lot of different opinions doing that. You offer the employees the ability to lead themselves um, and I think it's just ultimately very beneficial, not only to the individual, but to the team as well as the organization. Mm. But, but Priya, just broadening this out, there does appear to be a bit of a, a talent crisis in the sector. So from, from your perspective as a woman who's succeeded, what do you think that the financial services industry has to do to bring in gender equality to address that crisis so that women can feel that they're part of the change part of the journey that they can open the door for others? Um, I think you said it right. Talent crisis is one of the biggest challenges facing the industry today. And if we look at it in two parts, the first part is how do we bring more people into the industry, especially people who haven't traditionally considered financial services roles. Um, and then the second part is how do we reskill the people that we already have because it's a very dynamic industry and we have to stay abreast. So if you look at the first part, Sapient conducted uh, a research recently with 1,000 banking professionals globally, and about, only about a third of our organizations we surveyed said that e diversity is even something that they are committing to. So I think we have a long way to go in terms of opening the aperture 
um, to the point we were making in terms of bringing in more people with non-traditional backgrounds into financial services. And I think technology can be a key enabler for the second part, which is democratizing the learning process and making, you know, like Netflix of learning available so that everybody can keep changing, keep learning um, and, you know, expanding their mindset. Hmm. And I think financial security uh, comes um, with, with that job security and gender equality. Uh, you know, Queen Maxima spoke about it uh, on the first day of Cybos that we have to design products and we have to educate uh, people who are not investing in financial products so that we can bring in more wellness. And I think as we bring in more people into the industry, we have to make sure they're saving well um, and we educate them leveraging technology. Jackie, we could quote statistics all day long about how we're falling short in, in gender equality. Like the problem is there, but and there, are, there are business incentives also to solve it, but many problems fail, uh, many, pro many programs fail. Uh, what do we need to do differently, do you think? Well, I think firstly, it's really important that the gender balance we have, you know, at all levels in, in all industries um, reflects society. And if they don't, then we're not going to be doing things right. We're going to be missing an important voice in the room. So I think as leaders, it's really important that we make sure that everybody's voice is heard, that, that we don't have people who feel they can't speak out or that, they're, you know, that their point isn't important. And we need to make sure that we give people the space and the comfort to do that. We're trying to go with gender diversity at 50-50 across all levels by 2025 in Accenture, which is a huge and lofty ambition. And we're really beginning to get there. Like, you know, we, we, we're doing it at all the more junior levels, kind of some of our senior levels, we still have to do work, but we've got things in place that are making that happen around how we promote um, and around how we're training and the opportunities that we're giving people. So, you know, it can be done. I really believe it can be done. You know, I really like what Jackie said about people feeling that they're comfortable with speaking up. So when we think about, I think uh, women, and, and in my experience and what I've done before as well, is to think about performance and results and tasks and really just work hard. And what we need to think about as well also, you know, if this, you know, you can imagine the scenario of a promotion coming up, for example. Does that decision maker know what you do? Do you give them little sound bites of, here's an issue I've resolved or I've got this challenge, this is the way I'm thinking about it, what do you think? So if women can have that confidence just with their line manager, other managers and decision makers and just put them in a position of knowledge of here's how I'm thinking and here, here's how I could be ready for more responsibility. So, you know, for me, that, that, that's really important indeed. And also women helping each other as mm. well. Time and time again, I've been in, you know, a situation where there may be 10 women there in front of me and we're talking about, you know, their, where they're at in their career and so on. And I say, well, how do you help each other? You know, do you go for a coffee and talk about what, what's my side of the business where I am, somebody else, and just sharing that information and just starting, you know, women starting to help each other and actually show that I can think outside my role or my team or my business and take it up to strategically, you know, having those conversations, that lays the groundwork for leadership. And I think from a company perspective then, you know, really important, and I fully agree with what's being said in terms of frameworks for diversity, removing that unconscious bias and not leaving it to who happens to be making decisions and their life experience. You know, I have had it said before in the past where, you know, somebody may have a daughter coming out of their education and then they say, oh, you know, now uh, she's having a tougher time finding a job than perhaps my son. And I think, you know, but they've waited until that life experience to get involved and make a difference. So having those frameworks and shifting the culture that everyone is talking about, I think really will make a difference. Jennifer, coming off the back of Gronya's point there, putting someone in a position of knowledge, helping each other out, uh, what piece of advice would you give women who are entering or thinking of entering the financial services industry? I think the two of the, the most important skill sets you could have is um, the ability, just continuous learning, right? That desire to continuously take in information and knowledge. And the second piece is... Um, is around just active listening. And so I always encourage um, you know, women on my team to you know, invoke that curiosity, ask the questions and then question the answers. The more that you learn, the more that you um, listen, you both grow professionally as well as personally and that will help you know, with your career overall, regardless of the job you have. 
Mm. So Priya, Jennifer's points, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to explore your curiosity. What advice would you give to a young woman who says, Priya, I'm really tempted to go into financial services, but mm, I'm not so sure because I, I, I don't think I'd be welcome. What would you say to her? I'd say we need your perspective and we need a different perspective from what we are used to in the status quo. Over the weekend, I was at the Van Gogh Museum um, and one of the things I noticed as I was listening to what they were saying, Van Gogh had a different way of looking. If you look at his self-portraits, no two self-portraits are alike. Even playing around with the color of the eyes, uh, he would bring in emotion, expression, eventually leading to a masterpiece. And it's time we brought in some different points of view into the industry if we are looking at customer-first innovation. The other thing I, I heard this morning which really resonated with me was Kathy Bassan's session. And she said, if you have to succeed in financial services, you need trust and you need relationships. And that takes a lifetime of building. Uh, and so I, my advice would be, let's start doing that now. Um, and that will hold you in good stead through your career. And one thing we, we use in Sapient is the acronym SPEED, which is strategy, product, engineering, experience, and data. And to Jen's point on you know, having a learning mindset, if you come from a strategy or a product background, it's time that you learned more about engineering and data because that would really help expand the horizons. We are not looking for people to work in silos anymore. We want people to have a holistic point of view. Jackie, when you think of words like diversity and inclusion, what does it mean to you personally and what does it mean to you professionally? So the diversity piece um, for me is about listening to every voice. Um, but the inclusion is about people having the confidence to be there the, uh, and to speak up and say what they want to say. Like personally, I've been very fortunate in my career. I think I have a confident persona. So when I go into a room, I, I will make my point. I will say what I need to say. And uh, for, again, for me personally, I have three daughters actually, uh, one of whom has recently gone into financial services. And I have loved actually trying to mentor her, you know, giving her some snippets about what should you do when you get in the door? Like I said to her really quickly, find a senior woman in there and ask her what she did give you some advice you know so for me the inclusion bit is about trying to find your tribe and feeling that you're comfortable in your tribe and people are often very willing to share as well because if you share that person continues your legacy that's what you gave to them yes, yes. yes. and and, and Gronje, in BNP Paribas what do you think it's doing or what is it doing to improve the gender balance in key roles so it is a complex one and there's no one you know solution fits all and um, we're looking at both global level and regional level as well as multiple levels in the organization so some examples are in our executive committee uh, 10 years ago it was all men it's about a third women now we're looking at that 40 percent number uh, and, and keeping going uh, we have a program called leaders for tomorrow and that's looking at all levels in the organization looking at people with good potential uh, succession management and we have an almost 50 50 balance there now we're 48 women to 50 i know to the 52 percent men so we're almost there on that and also then looking actually regionally so where i am i i happen to be in london in the uk so we have programs again for women's careers and for that advice and that mentorship and the great points that people are talking about so you know it is complex but you know and it's various programs with the backing of BNP and, and that investment, then, you know, you, you reap the rewards down the mm. line. And clearly they're serious about this. You don't make these investments unless you care, putting your, mo your money where your mouth is, basically. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and consistently as well. Mm. Mm. We've heard some great advice from you guys for the next generation of female ladies, but let's talk about yourselves for a second. Jennifer, what do you think's been some of the keys to your success of becoming a woman leader in the financial services industry? Uh, I have always gone after opportunities, so rolling up my sleeves is even still part of my part of my role um, with my team. I, I think that the more that you're willing to put yourself out there and take a chance, and there are many many projects and and career moves that I've had where I knew nothing about the subject matter I was getting into, but I didn't care. I was willing and ready to roll up the sleeves, take the time, learn, become that subject matter expert and grow from there. And I think for me, um, you know, 
if I look back, you know, year over year, decade over decade, I, I see how that is just continuously built up and driven, driven success over time. So I'd encourage anyone just to be willing to put their hand up and regardless of their knowledge base on, on anything in their career and just go for it. Yes. Sometimes willing to make a mistake, I guess, because yeah. that's the yeah. only yeah. way yeah. to learn. Yeah, taking ownership of those mistakes mm. as well. Yeah, Absolutely. that's part of the strategy. But Priya, I mean, we've heard about what's happening at BNP Paribas. What's happening at the company where you are in terms of, you know, taking positive action to further uh, diversity, equality and, of course, inclusion so that everybody, regardless of where they are, can feel that they're part of the company and ultimately part of its journey? I joined the company three years ago and one of the first things that was said to me was understanding the purpose of the company, which is about um, helping our people thrive in the brave pursuit of the next. And that's our employees, our clients, and their end customers. And our value system in the company underpins um, our purpose. And some of the core values, which is around either uh, inclusive collaboration, engaging with openness, uh, are all part of that fabric of the company. Um, so I want to highlight two specific programs uh, one is on spring, and that is about bringing women and the underrepresented genders back into the workforce. And so anybody with an engineering background or a product development background, uh, we provide that on-ramp and we provide the reskilling and the training to bring them back into the workforce. And the other, I think we spoke about the importance of mentorship, and it's, uh, related, it's the RISE program, and uh, that is run by our champions and the BRGs in the company to help with either the advocacy um, and the mentorship, the skills development. So I think that's how we are bringing in positive change. Well, look, the good thing is that it's happening. We're having this conversation and we know that something good will emerge out of it. Structures are in place and you are paving the way for the future. And I thank you for that. I also congratulate you on what you've achieved. It's been recognized by Cybos. And hopefully, we'll hook up again next year in Toronto so that you can actually update us on what's been going on. But look, thank you so much to Jackie, Gronje, Jennifer, and Priya. It's good to see you, and enjoy the rest of Cybos 2022. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.